James Madison took a pen and paper and sketched out a mode for electing the president. Madison sketched out a formula whereby each state would choose electors equal to the state's total number of senators and representatives. This electoral college would then elect the president. And they make him elected by the people through an electoral college. A last minute change, but what a huge change it was. The elaborate electoral system would have profound consequences for the balance of power between northern and southern states. Without an electoral college, if you put things to a direct popular vote, the North would win every time because the South doesn't let a huge part of its population, called slaves, vote. But with an electoral college, the South can count its slaves, albeit with a discount, the three-fifths clause. But with an electoral college, the South gets to count its slaves. It's getting extra credit for its slaves. And that's why the big winner in this system is, unsurprisingly, Virginia. It's a big state with a lot of slaves. And that's the state that occupies the presidency for 32 of the first 36 years under the Constitution. It's the three-fifths clause through the Electoral College that basically guarantees that all your early presidents are either Southerners or Northern men of Southern sympathies. There is not an openly anti-slavery president until Abraham Lincoln. There's not an openly anti-slavery cabinet officer in all of American history before Lincoln's presidency. So you have pro-slavery presidents created by a pro-slavery electoral college, which builds on the three-fifths clause, who give you pro-slavery cabinets and pro-slavery judges, because presidents appoint judges.